Slow motion. It's great. It's given us everything from incredible views of lightning and other fast moving elements down to crazy advancements and offshoots like bullet time from the matrix. But straightforward cinematic slow motion is what we're going to be talking about today. It's the butter on the popcorn. It just makes just about everything cooler. You need someone to look like a badass while walking slow motion. <laughs> You need to emphasize a moment that you've been building to slow motion. You need to make 10% of your four hour movie in slow motion. Well, then you're Zack Snyder. Okay. Apparently something like 20 minutes of his Justice League film was in slow motion. I mean, Zack Snyder is the king of badass slow motion at the moment, so I'm not surprised. The full history of slow motion is a little difficult to track since technically the first use of it was through hand crank cameras. If you crank them slower or under crank, you get fast motion, but when you crank faster, known as over cranking, you would get slower motion. So many say that George Millet was the first to use it, notably in a trip to the moon, but it's so slight that I'm not sure I even want to count it. An actual device for the creation of slow motion was first invented in 1904 by an Austrian priest and physicist, but it was first presented in 1907. Then if we move to much later, you have most crediting Kurosawa for popularizing this effect through his film Seven Samurai in 1954. Then later on, you have other filmmakers who really brought it to the mainstream in a big way, like John Woo, who inspired so many filmmakers that came after him. And now now, again, we have Snyder as the reigning champ of badass slow motion. So today we want to take a quick look at how you can go about creating slow motion on your own. Not an exercise in getting the most cinematic shot that will come through your location, your lighting, your composition, and so on. Today we just want to look at the motion of slow motion. First up is the basic right in camera high frame rate approach. This is the obvious and correct approach whenever you want to do slow motion. So take a moment that happens in an instant, like with fire or some kind of destruction like this here. You take a shot like this, which already looks amazing because explosions, but since we originally shot it at 300 frames per second, we can slow it down and give it a whole new life. But we don't always have 300 frames per second. So let's look at something simple like slapping this water here. So we're able to take it from that base 24 frames per second up to the 300 frames per second to see how each of those rates feel in motion. But before we do, I did want to let you know about a sale we have going on on Triune Digital right now now for the month of April. It started on April 5th with our sound effects packs and on April 12th, we're gonna be shifting to our music packs. Again, each week has a different group, a different category of our products on sale of up to 50% off. So if you're looking for any of our royalty free music for your projects, any of our sound effects, our VFX assets, or even LUTs, make sure you check the notes for more details about when each of those will be on sale. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at these shots. Of course, the most mesmerizing is going to be the 300 frames per second. And of course, each frame rate feels entirely different. But on top of that, each camera is going to feel a little bit different for how it handles it as well. So that's another test we wanted to do, putting several of our cameras, including the iPhone back to back to see how different they felt or not.
One thing to keep in mind here is how your camera is recording its slow motion. Some will only record certain speeds at lower resolutions like 720, or it might be scaled up or the image might be cropped. So if you're looking for a camera with slow motion in mind, keep those factors at the top of your head. But in these shots, the Blackmagic cameras are definitely giving us the best results, especially with the Ursa, again, being able to hit those 300 frames per second. But the iPhone does a surprisingly good job as well. You need a bunch of light with the iPhone iPhone, but in the right circumstance, I'm constantly surprised by what you can get from a phone. Definitely a great C cam to have in your pocket. Now, again, the highest that we're going here is 300 frames per second, which can have really great results. But if you want to go even further, you need something like a Phantom Flex camera like we used for ballistic with this shot right here. <laughs> or when we did our destruction pack promo with these shots here, breaking TVs and clocks and cameras or Josh with these vases. These cameras are probably most well known thanks to the slow-mo guys, but they really take a shot like this that happens insanely fast and turns it into something really beautiful. Water, fire, anything breaking at all, it all looks amazing in super high speed slow motion. And if I remember right, all of these were done at 2000 frames per second. But that camera is really expensive to rent and you need a ton of light. So is it possible to fake that in post? The short answer is not really. Maybe with a mixture of things, but for something like a fast destructive moment like this water slap, slowing down a 24 frame per second shot is next to impossible. Since again, you only have those 24 frames per second to work with. But if you do have something higher like 120 or 300, you can take this a little further in post by slowing the speed down a bit more. There's a lot more to work with here with those 120 or 300 frames per second. So you get a decent result, not exactly 2000 frames per second, but you can push it. You're just going to want to make sure to turn on optical flow or whatever your version of optical flow is for your software. This does a much better job of flowing between the frames you are slowing. But again, if you take it too far with a shot like this, it gets weird fast. Let's compare so you can see what I mean. If we slow this shot down to 50%, making it 600 frames per second now, we have a pretty choppy look. But if we change that frame sampling to optical flow, the shot absolutely works. All of those falling droplets feel really solid, though back in this area, you do get a slight sense of that morphing that's happening to make the slowing work. To see that morphing even better and break this shot, let's take it too far, say 25%. Now you are really getting a sense of that warping, giving the shot an obvious and odd feel, like right here as the hand comes down. We're getting some gross warping with the background that is just breaking the shot, and here when the water is first coming out. But here, where the hand is pulling back Back out of the water, you're getting this odd style that feels trippy in a cool way to me. So if you know this going in, maybe you could utilize this effect for a purposeful off feeling to your shot. But then if you take a shot that is less complex, like this swing shot here, and you do the same thing, you can take something like a 120 frame shot and pull it to 300 frames without any issues at all, since the original shot doesn't have as many small, quick movements as something like the water. But if you don't have any slow motion capabilities at all, you can fake slow motion entirely like we did in this old episode here. Nothing was actually in slow motion. It was all 24 Four frames per second, we just acted it all out. Then with the addition of some VFX elements, it sells pretty well. It's the same sort of concept of all those frozen in time shots you see. More often than not, the actors are just holding still while the camera moves through that space. You add in some VFX elements and there you go. This would definitely work even better if you can shoot a bit higher, like 60 frames per second. That will take any small movements out that would give the shot away very easily. But that removal of small distracting movement is is actually another great use of slow motion overall, like I did with these Blackmagic test shots. We didn't have a tripod and the lenses I wanted to use didn't have any image stabilization. So throwing it in 60 frames per second smoothed out all those annoying jitters and just made it all work great. It also just makes for more cinematic feeling shots. So whether you have a phantom camera or one that will only take you up to 60 frames or not even that high, there are always ways that you can utilize slow motion for yourself for all kinds of effects. The most important thing is knowing your resources and planning with that in mind. But again, don't forget about our sale. Links to that in the notes below. We'll have links to all the gear that we used in today's episode down there as well. And if you are not subscribed, consider doing that and hit the bell to be notified about all our new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.